So there's always a lot of discussion around the Grand National about, um, you know, isn't it cruel to get the horses to jump big fences and there are lots of fallers and so on and so forth. And they made amendments to the fences not so long ago, a few years ago, a couple of years, can't remember when it was, about to try and um, increase safety. But I actually think that that's made things worse. And it's interesting because the jockeys said the same thing as well. So I went off and I did some data on it to have a look at it. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you're interested in learning more about Bet Angel, its tools and the opportunities they present, then why not visit betangel.com today and download a free trial? Yeah, so the amendments they made um, at the fences at the Grand National were to basically uh, make them safer, in inverted commas. And the jockeys came around and said, well, you know, if you lower the fences, the horses will go at them more and there'll be more fallers. And uh, I thought, is that the case really? Is, is, or is that just some sort of uh, weird excuse? So I thought, well, rather than just throw some conjecture into the debate, let's actually go out and see what impact um, all of the different characteristics of jumps have and uh, how that affects how many fallers there are and whether it's safe or not. Because obviously the more fallers there are, you would hypothesize uh, that it's not as safe as for the for the horses, but also the jockeys. Why, why are the jockeys for, forgotten on this sort of debate? You know, a lot of jockeys have got seriously injured through falls. They're not going to do anything that would uh, increase the chances of that, really, are they? I mean, that's, that's really not going to happen. And um, so surely, you know, we should listen to them when they have an opinion. But of course, you know, politics and uh, pressure groups and so on will necessarily pull all of that sort of stuff together um, and come up with arguments to counter it. But in fact, you know, why not talk to the people that are directly involved in it? So the first thing I looked at is the Grand National is actually um, a 40 runner race. And I thought, let's see if congestion on the race course actually increases the number of fallers. Are you going to say yes or no to does the number of runners influence um, the number of fallers. So we're not going to ask any particular questions here, but would the number of runners directly correlate to the number of fallers? Yes or no? Now the answer is yes, the number of runners does correlate to the number of fallers, but not in a way that you would expect. So when I looked at field sizes, I looked at um, the average size of the field. Now obviously the Grand National is unique in that it's got 40 runners, totally you know it's out there most of the races would tend to have 10 runners plus or minus a certain number um, so the majority of this data comes from those smaller in inverted commas fields but i looked at races with runners between 3 and 17 runners to see what impact the field size had on the number of fallers and the curious thing is is the smaller the field the more fallers there are as a percentage of the total field so the bigger fields you have you tend to have less fallers. Now, it's quite a small percentage, but nonetheless, that percentage is there, and you can see it on the graph. You can see it goes from one corner to the other, and it goes from smaller numbers to higher numbers in terms of the number of runners. So you can sort of hypothesize, really, that maybe when horses are in smaller fields, they tend to be going for it a bit more, um, or perhaps they need to be challenging a bit more or closer to, you know, there's, there's something going on there that's creating that factor. Whereas, in fact, bigger fields, Generally, you tend to find that the jockeys are taking a little bit more care and um, perhaps trying to avoid accidents because there are so many runners. But that, that could be the case from there. Um, I looked over distance to see if um, horses getting tired may be a potential issue uh, within a particular race. Um, so what would you say? Would you say that tired horses t tend to jump worse um, or not? So, you know, the longer the race is, are there more fallers or not? The answer? Give me your answer now. Well, the answer is that generally the longer uh, a race is, then you do tend to get slightly more fallers in a race. But it's actually a tiny, tiny percentage. And it's a very slight graph. It's not an exponential graph. It's very slight. When you're looking at the minimum trip of two miles, um, generally the number of fallers is about 2% and then as it rises to much much longer distances it's sort of around uh, I put up I put it put it in here on in furlongs actually so uh, if, if we say 24 furlongs is going to be three miles uh, but around 21 furlongs you tend to find that um, it starts to level off a bit 
Um, so yeah, you know, if you're you're looking between two and three miles, it tends to plateau at that particular point. So yes, it does increase, but it's very slight, and um, it tends to level off fairly quickly uh, in the overall scheme of things. So then we come um, to another aspect here, because obviously we can't measure the fences. So we're just trying to look at other things that cause horses um, to uh, be more or less likely to fall. So I thought if I actually arranged the percentage of fallers by the time of year, that may give me an indication as to what's likely to be happening. So in other words, um, you know, was there more fallers at one time of the year or another? But of course, the jump season only runs between certain periods. So I sort of abandoned that idea. And I thought, well, actually, let's have a look at the going, because the going should be to tell me and give me some information as to how things are likely to go, excuse the pun. But um, the interesting thing about this, again, the difference between different types of going is, is slight, but it does give you a clue as to what's going on with the horse in this particular race. So do you think um, that firm ground is going to produce more fallers or do you think that heavy ground is going to produce more fallers? So firm ground is where there isn't much give in the ground and heavy ground is where basically it's, it, it, the horse puts its foot into the ground and it sinks halfway into the ground. So the horses are getting really tired on heavy ground um, and they've still got 400 fences to jump. So which do you think it is? Do you think that firm ground produces more fallers or do you think that heavy ground produces more fallers? Well the answer is firm ground produces more fallers and uh, when you look at the the data it's reasonably well correlated so if you go firm, good to firm, good, good to soft, soft, soft to heavy and then heavy the interesting thing is is that when you get into the soft and heavy ground um, the number of fallers starts to decline so basically on heavier ground, the horses are going to be running slower, but it seems that if they're running slower, then they seem to jump more cleanly, which is pretty much what the jockeys said when they said, don't lower the fences at the Grand National because the horses will run at them faster. If you have a tall fence and you have heavy ground, the horses tend to be running slower and tend to time their jumps just that little bit better. But if the ground is firm, and the horses are running at them quite quickly, then that tends to be when um, there are more fallers. So it's probably a missed time to jump is creating half of that issue. So in fact, I think that at the Grand National, if they lowered the fences as they did and tried to make them safer from the public perspective, that probably um, is making them slightly more dangerous. And certainly if you did that across all the race courses, you'd start to see more fallers. Whereas at the moment, um, the sort of status quo sort of says that in fact you know if there is heavy ground then one or two things will happen the horse will slow down and have a little bit more time to assess the jump and jump it properly um, or perhaps if the jockey is feeling that the horse um, is not able to cope with the ground and the conditions and the jumps then he will pull him up and that's more or less what you see you can see in the stats that the jockeys are pulling up more horses in heavy ground they're not making them jump they're not forcing them to jump. They can tell when the horse is responding or not responding properly and they're, and they're taking the necessary action. So, you know, from a PR perspective, modifying the course has probably been a win. Uh, but from a safety perspective, I suspect uh, that it hasn't been a win and that, in fact, lowering fences and making them easier to jump uh, probably will increase the propensity of there being more accidents. Um, and that's borne out through the stats that I've looked at. I haven't deliberately looked to try and find that. I just looked at all of the stats um, and was totally surprised, um, as you probably were, that there were more fallers on firm ground as a percentage of the total field than there were on heavy ground. But I think that the statistics have proved a point.